that you know that the, the small minority who don't want it can actually do anything effectively against that conscious uh, majority who organise in order to achieve it. Sorry? But are we the mass of the people, the working class, and there's a little minority who we don't want what they are offering, and yet they're in power doing quite well, thank We're you We're a very completely much. disorganised mass, and unfortunately most of us don't know what we want. Uh, some of us want what we're offering, some don't, some want this bit, some want that bit. We're disorganised. The point about socialism that people need is that people need to organise collectively for a common goal. That doesn't exist at the moment. Can yeah, I totally agree with what the two said at the back on the, on, you know, the, the unfortunate necessity for violence and you know, the animal farm is a very good example of that was to, to new rulers and all well saw that in his time in Spain and all that with the Communist Party. You now there are some historic examples but they don't concur with the SBG's youthful. I mean, the obvious one that comes to mind is the end day in Chile where he won a democratic, you know, he wasn't an out-and-out an out revolutionary, but he won a democratic mandate for radical social change by the ballot box. Um, and what happened? You know, basically, if the ruling class within your own country doesn't get you, they'll find some allies with outside. So you can forget the picture of Allende on the balcony with guns, American planes flew overhead, and uh, people were rounded up in football stadiums and put to death and shot, and, and you know, um, if there'd been some people have been more organised to fight back, and a lot of people may not have been killed, and uh, you know, you may have been, a revolution may have occurred. I mean, the other thing is that, you know, where do these organs of, you abolish the state, but where do these new forms or organs of working class power come from? They just come out of the blue, you know. Um, in, every, in every historic example, there's been a revolution, you know, well, uh, attempt at a revolution. Workers' councils or Soviets or community councils, whatever you want, they are the forms which are always thrown up from Russia to Hungary, wherever you go. But, you know, people have had experience of these before capitalism has broken down. You know, when I talk of prefigurative forms of struggle, I'm talking about things which develop within the belly of the beast and which are ready to take power afterwards and exercise working class power. But, you know, the Socialist Party of Great Britain has just got some utopian view that can abolish the state. The army will say okay, everyone will say we're abolished, the police will say we're abolished, the army will say oh, we're abolished. You know, the capitalist class will say well, we're abolished, fair enough, we've lost one seat in the by election, it's all over comrades. I mean, you know, it defies absolutely beggars' belief to believe that, you know, you'd have to, you'd have to be of a certain, you know, ultra utopian mindset to believe that this was the real world that the Socialist Party of, uh, of, um, of Great Britain lives in. You know, what are the forms that working class power that could be life will be organised under socialism? You know, you know it's things that still you know, food production, communications, you know, we don't want to be sent into chaos. What are those forms? I've never heard anything from the Socialist Party of Great Britain. So what these new forms of organisation would be. You know, we don't say, well let's have socialism, we can abolish the state, you know, and it's not, you know. If you've got, you might have a simple majority of parliament, but there's anti-social toll out there that are going to run them up. You know, what sort of what sort of forms of organisation is that going to be dealt with? It seems to me that, you know, the, SD, the SPG verges on the sort of, you know, people who go up a mountain, the end of the world's going to come, you know, there's, there's no... And then it's certainly disappointing when it doesn't. Right, uh, just before I take the next floor, I've got a couple, couple of hands, but just, uh, we were asked for an example from the guy at the back, and I'll step outside from the chair. I do have one example, which is the St. Louis Commune of 1877. Uh, I'll discuss it later. Best <laughs> 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 of the list. <laughs> yes, the, the example of Allende is usually um, given, but in fact, it, it doesn't give. It doesn't make the case as you think it does, or the speak thinks it does, because um, if I remember correctly, and I think that Allende was elected with about forty-three or forty-seven percent of the vote uh, on the first occasion. In other words, he wasn't elected by, uh, in any case, wasn't elected by the majority of, of people going for socialism. There, there was a, a, it was a, a mixed uh, group. Um, in the second uh, um, election, in fact, more people voted against uh, Allende than voted for him. Um, it, I mean, it, it had nothing to do with um, with getting socialism, it is not an, not an example in that way. Um, to get socialism, <laughs> you need socialists, and it has already been suggested that what will happen is that 
people will already have ideas about how the uh, new system has to be implemented in every sphere, which means that there will be socialists who have been in, in the army or maybe socialists still in the army, because I can't imagine that when these ideas take off, they will take off slowly. You know, that we'll carry on getting the odd full May every, uh, every other meeting or something. The, the idea is at some stage you have to accelerate, and that is the, is the only way, as I see it, that, that it can happen. So there will be um, members of the armed forces will be soldiers. Um, and the capitalist class <laughs> won't have uh, as it has now, workers to do everything that the system needs to be done. The workers will have decided, people will have decided that they're going to do it in their own interest, that the, the capitalist class is redundant anyway and it will be uh, completely redundant. The other thing about the socialist revolution is that it's not emphatically not a minority taking over in minority interest. It is taking over in the interest in, in the, of the whole of humankind. It, it's a, a revolution that doesn't mean anyone any harm. The, the capitalists can roll up their sleeves and, and, uh, and join in. <laughs> <laughs> no, just two hands. Uh, second floor there. Oh, oh it's not necessary, just <laughs> so you're clear. <laughs> You've heard me ask a question before, you have understood I've only read one book and I can't remember it properly. But it's all <laughs> in a civilizing process. As I understand it, there's an elite and there's the outsiders. And uh, violence is used in order to get resources, and the outsiders are used to keep the elite alive with food and shoe repairs and whatever. Now then there was a, a movement from the outside is when I think they call it the bourgeoisie, when money started coming into the system and the bourgeoisie were attracted to the elite, not the other way around. Now then when I go to Surrey on a ride and look at the houses there and I think, my God, I'd like one of those. And I question whether I am a socialist. <laughs> what are you going to do with the smart houses? Do you want to live in a high-rise in Clapham? Or would you like one of these nice properties, properly renovated, um, in Surrey? How does socialism work? What's going to attract me to you? It's all very well having theories, because I, I would like to be able to make bread for you, because I enjoy making bread. But at the moment, I can't see how the majority of are going to attract that minority. I think that's probably just a book. Yeah, it's on this or one here. Can I sort of um, begin to say something about a couple of things Ian said and so that will sort of lead into that. So, a bit disappointed to hear Ian using this old sphere term, utopian. Uh, it's the term that sort of tends to get used perhaps by worse detractors of which I don't think it is one, so we're a bit disappointed by that. Um, it's, you know, it's, it gets used by people who are, are on the whole, who are sort of very much um, in favour of capitalism and uh, completely opposed to the kind of ideas we're talking about. Uh, but anyway, Ian used it, maybe he wants to take it back, I don't know. Uh, uh, but he sort of answered his own question in a way, because he said, you never think about 